Hi everybody, welcome to a random tandem video. So random that it's been a minute since I've done one. Um, today I'm just going to get right down to it and I'm going to talk about uh, perm rods for 4C hair and um, what I had to go through to get this done, which is why I'll explain these in a few minutes. Um, as everybody know who's watched my videos, who have stuck by me for years, that I am um, 4C extreme coil shrinkage low porosity and I have been um, natural since 2012 and I wash my hair twice a week I'm sorry twice a month I wash my hair twice a month and between those times I like to keep a style in my hair because I learned the hard way that I cannot comb it's not advisable that I brush or comb my hair when it's dry because when it does my hair is at its weakest when it's dry it's brittle it breaks off hence the um, like the frizz that you can see all through here but yeah so I try to find a style that I that um, will keep me from having to um, comb and brush it so one of the styles that I have used that have uh, that I found out that worked is the two strand twist and another style which you see right here I'm gonna probably zoom in so well, I'm not zooming in, but I'm trying to do this where it won't blur, and I apologize if it does. Is the finger coils? Um, I'm just unraveling that, but uh, as you can see, I can uh, put this style in my hair, and this style has been in my hair for 13 days. So um, I know this style works, but these are just only two styles that I use. So I try to. I'm going to try to find other styles. And I know that there are a lot of videos out there on perm rods, but in my case, the videos that I've seen, um, there were questions that I needed answered, but of all the videos that I saw, nobody answered none of the questions that I needed answered. So in order for me to figure out how the perm rods work, I have to try it out for myself. So the first thing I decided was the budget. Now, I try to not to become a hair product junkie because I have purchased a lot of products that one 4C person hair type live by and I will buy it and I find out that it don't work for my hair and I have to realize what may work for my hair may not work for, what may work for the other person's hair may not work for mine. I mean, there are people who have the same hair type that I have, but not the hair shaft. So, um, I try not to become a hair product junkie. And I try to make sure that if I'm going to um, invest in something that I don't want to waste my money. So, um, when I said I was going to do the perm rise, I decided to give myself a $10 budget. I know that's probably not above that but that's what I've done. Um, the second thing I did, well I gave myself a budget of ten dollars so when I figured out that I would only spend ten bucks the next thing I decided was the size. Um, I know on different websites they have different shapes, different sizes, different colors and a few websites had the same thing saying that um, gray perm rods and white perm rods were the most popular and I think there are for medium to long length hair. Now the top of my hair it comes to my shoulder, the medium part of my hair comes to my collarbones, these are my collarbones, and the low part of my hair comes here. Just to show you, that's the low part. Okay, so it comes a little further than that. So I needed to try to find uh, perm rods that will be able to fit my hair. Next thing I wanted to know is how many perm rods am I going to want to use? And, and like I said, it all depends on how many spirals I want. So um, I went to eBay, my go-to source for hair products, and I came across a seller, and I'm going to say this person's name, Lisko1, L-I-S-K-O, and the number one. I'm saying this person's name because I do not recommend anybody go to this seller and buy anything from their page because when I saw the perm rods um, it looked like the size that I needed said I think 316 inch I could be wrong it's either 316 or 328 and it was the right price it was two dollars and fifty cent but the shipping and handling was 260 but they had a five dozen deal so was it five dozen five dozen sixty perm rods let's just say that and so um I said that's right on my alley I can go ahead and use that it's the right size it's the right price and I can't go wrong with it so when I got them uh, perm rods in the mail um, they came in this pack and as you can see the serial number and everything like that 
I was pretty excited. But this is not 3 eighteenths of an inch. Now, I went to Sally's and um, and this is before I was able to get to Sally's. I looked at the 3 16 perm rise and Sally's 3 inch perm rise is like that length. So if you take that away, that's just the size of the perm rise. And I realized that if I put those size perm rise in my hair, I don't know, it probably looked like I had Fred Flintstone rollers in my head. So I said maybe these will work. But at the time, I asked the seller if I can exchange it for the actual right size or get my money back and they said no. And I, the reason why I don't recommend you going to this person is because they have so many negative feedback. It's not even funny. They have a tendency to alter their pictures and just send you the wrong stuff. So I'm stuck with these perm rods. Now the next thing I said to myself was since I know that my 4C here is hard to uh, maintain when it's dry, do I put the perm rods in my hair when it's wet? Because I know on several videos there are girls who put perm rods in their hair when it's wet and there are some who put their hair in perm rods when it's dry. In my case, hence why you see these rollers right here, I put, uh, I use, I just put product on there while it was dry and I just rolled it up. On this side, I put product in my hair and um, while it was wet. And I'm going to show you the difference. I don't know if you can see it, but one is more shinier than the other. So this is the wet and this is the dry. And I also um, started thinking, okay, what kind of product do I put in my hair? Now, when I do my two strand twist, um, I usually use three products and I switch them up just so my hair won't get used to it. Now, um, when I started transitioning, um, I was using, no, when I started transitioning and using two strand twist, um, I started to use this. I was using this only and it, it, it wasn't working, so I stopped using it and I just did water. But sometimes, sometime along the line, I decided to see if I could combine these two and see how it works. So I used the uh, Curl Souffle Gel and I used the uh, Curl Enhancer Smoothie and I used both of these together and I used the two strands and um, that's how I do it. The second one that I have used, that I just started using was, like I said, the S Curl. This is the uh, styling spray and I just haven't been too long. I bought this about I think two years ago but I just started using it now. So like I said I've become a product junkie and it's been sitting in my closet. The last thing that I have been using that I love is this. Now um, like I said trying to figure out which one of these to use when I do to my perm rise I, I did the process of elimination. Now, um, I know the Curl Enhance and Souffle and the Curl Smoothie, when I do my two strand twist out, um, the style only lasts in my hair for like a day. So I know for a fact that I will not be using the Souffle and the um, Smoothie together to do my perm rise. It's a toss up between uh, the styling spray, moisturizing spray and the gel. Um, now when I take the two strand twist out with these two, my two strand twist lasts for three to four days as well as this one. So it's between the S Curl and the um, Afro-G uh, conditioner. Now, now that, now that I talk about that, I'm going to get with these. Now, I said, do I want to do this on wet or dry hair? And which products do I want to use? Now, this is the dry side. The first one I got to remember um, is the S Curl. This one is the Curl Souffle and Curl Smoothie. And this one is the Afro G um, Leave In Moisturizer. So I never took this down. This is my first time checking it out and I wanted to see how this was. So also, and then I'll show how I roll this. Oh, I think I rolled that the wrong way or it's tangled. I can't remember. Okay. Show you. The one thing I hate is that it bunches up. That's the one thing that drives me nuts. Um, 
I can't remember what I was going to say about the uh, curl. Yeah, um, there's females who have took additional steps to get their perm rise perfect. I think some girls did the flat twist and then put the perm rise in. And I say if I'm going to do a flat twist, well, I put the perm rise in. There's females who uh, would braid their hair and then put the perm rise in. And I'm like, if I'm going to braid my hair, well, I put the perm rise in. Then there's other females who do the two strand twist, but then they put the perm rise in. So I'm like, if I'm going to do the two strand twist, what's the point of doing the perm rise? My hair coils automatically. So why am I taking all these additional steps plus? So um, as you can see, I took the, some of the girls took the perm rise and they started from the bottom and rolled it up. But <clears throat> I always have a hard time with my roots because they just don't want to stretch unless I stretch it. And this is what it looks like uh, if I did the, um, yeah, the S curl, dry S curl. And this one is the curl souffle and smoothie. And I just, I'm trying to unravel this the way I rolled it without pulling on it. And <laughs> you can't even tell. Hopefully it's not blurred up. But you can't tell, except for the edges, the roots. So that's, yeah, between that and my coils. And I did not get the end of that. Make sure you wrap the ends really well. Now this one is the Afuji Leave-In Moisturizing Conditioner. And since this is on my right side, it's so awkward. I'm right-handed, but I had a hard time trying to get this <laughs> wrapped. Okay, here we go. Technically, <laughs> they all look the same. So it probably don't matter. But, there it is. That's the S-curl. Shea Moisture and the Apple G. And I think the Apple G probably loosens it a little bit more than the S Curl. Now, same thing but with wet hair. This is the S Curl. And this side was easier than my right side. And this is done, this was done on wet hair. That's a nice little spiral. I like that. That's the S curl. Remember, wet, dry. This is the uh, Shea Moisture. Oh, I got tangles. Um, hmm. I don't know if I did that right or not, but. This one is the S curl. I'm sorry, this is the Shea Moisture. This is the S curl. The S curl looks better than the Shea Moisture. And this one is the Afro G. Leave in Moisture Conditioner. And it took a while for my hair to dry on this. It took about like several. Oh hours. So um, basically uh, between all three of these I'm going to say the one that works the best for me is this. Uh, this on wet hair. Okay so um, this is the turn off for all six of these and I think my hair is still kind of damp. It takes, yeah that's been a minute since it's been drying so I probably have to sit on the dryer. But this is what I, um, this is my experiment. This is real time right here. Um, doing it on dry hair, not working for me. But doing this on wet hair with the S curl, it looks like the S curl turned out to be a lot better. Um, I'm going to be doing this style tomorrow. And I don't know how many perm rods I'm going to be putting in my hair, but uh, it's pretty much probably going to be the way I do my two strand twists and my finger coils. So um, without trying to make this video long, I'm going to do a part two. I'm going to show uh, 
how my whole head turned out and then I'm going to talk about the upkeep. I want to see how long I can keep this in my hair, hopefully for two weeks. And if so, this would be on my uh, hairstyle list. This will only be three hairstyles that I can get away with for two weeks. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next random tandem video. <coughs> Hairball.